and welcome to Tea Time with me, Shaili Chopra. It's sultry as hell in Delhi. We're going to be playing this game at 12 noon. It's going to be a tough one. But for golfers, heck, any weather is all right. And that's why we've got on the show Sanjeev Agarwal. He's a man who's taken risk and he's become an entrepreneur to a private equity man with ease. At Helion Ventures, they're looking now at major e-commerce sites. And that's why we'll debate. Is e-commerce in for a serious rise or a bust in the future? That's a special on the show. Nobody can tell uh, whether you've paid the right price for a company. But I think uh, there is a bit of future which is uh, built into this. In news, England's Danny Willett wins the BMW International Open in playoff. BMW have put on a great event. Um, I mean, unfortunately, weather today, but, you know, I think it's made for a pretty exciting finish. You know, I mean, there's a lot of guys up there. You know, I don't know what the, the guys in second and third place were minus 10. There's probably three or four of them. So it was really close all day. So, you know, I mean, it's, just been, it's been a brilliant one. Casey Wittenberg wins the Nationwide Tours with Kita Open and Golfing Tips with Jasjeet Singh. Bunker, as we all know, we cannot ground our club on the sand. Sanjeev, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks Good so meeting much you. for joining us. Uh, it's, it's, it's my pleasure to host you here. You're a golfing man, big time. Yeah, somewhat, you know. I played a lot of golf, Shelly, when I was uh, growing up in Chandigarh. That was probably between my 20s and 30s. Right. But last 10 years, to be honest with you, I haven't played too much. I've been busy building the business. Right. That Using leave... golf strategy in boardrooms, not on the course. <laughs> You know, I have kept these two things separate, to be honest with you. Golf for fun and boardrooms are for doing business. Yeah. I know this is a big cliche that you use golf to promote your business, but you I do golf for pure fun. You know, it's very relaxing to be on the course. Why do you want to mess it up? You know, just fast forwarding time, Helion Ventures, when yeah. did that emerge and from where? I had started a, a BPO company called Daksh. Yes. Which I sold to IBM in 2004. Yeah. And then I stayed on for another couple of years. So then I was in no man's land in 2006. And I had three, three choices to make. One was to continue working at IBM. Yeah. Uh, but I had done enough of uh, uh, working for large companies in my uh, prior life. So that didn't seem like a new era. But Daksh was an entrepreneurial venture for you, so yes. you, you wanted to step into another entrepreneurial venture. Yeah, so the second option was to start another company. I see. And uh, I, to be honest with you, did not have any idea the way I had uh, thought of Daksh in year 2000. So the third option was that I have learned about building a company. And can I... Start investing in them. Can I start investing in a young company and not only invest but also help them. Uh, build businesses. Okay. So be a be a mentor, be a coach. So that actually caught my fancy because here you deal with the breadth of uh, businesses, industry. Businesses, yeah. that's right. While, You're not sector specific. Yes, while you are an entrepreneur, you are very focused on one particular dimension. Yeah. So so I think uh, it's it's been a good journey. We have raised uh, three funds. We have $600 million under management we have uh, had a very good success with our investment in Make My Trip. Right. I don't Absolutely. know if you follow this company. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> it's been quite a success story. Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, you're very much still invested there. We have uh, part divested. We are part invested. Right. We are long-term uh, investors and we believe that uh, there is a lot more to come. So, you know, you'd be the right person to give me an insight into what you think is happening in the e-commerce world. Now, today we are beginning to, again, come back to the times when people were willing to click and yeah. buy. Yeah. Uh, 
I think at the forefront have been travel and ticketing companies. Yes. For yes. obvious reasons, it's the least risk and, you know, it's, it's pretty standard. Yeah. Um, but is that getting replicated elsewhere in terms of uh, other businesses? You know, e-commerce uh, in India is going through a second coming. Yes. You must have noticed in 2000, we had a lot of uh, e-commerce startups. That's right. Most of it flamed out because that time it was driven by investor frenzy. E-commerce generally starts with services uh, because in services, the delivery is not very uh, tenuous. You know, you can yeah. send a ticket electronically, but products you have to ship physically. Yes. So I think the anchor of any e-commerce is indeed travel, which, as you know, has done very well with Make My Trip, Yatra yeah. and Clear and Trip. And that is beginning to cross over to other categories like consumer electronics, uh, books, uh, apparel. So it's not a question of it, it, if at all. It's a question of... How at, much? Yeah, how much and when does it... Scale uh, up. Scale up. Indeed. Uh, and we are finding that very high quality entrepreneurs are uh, coming Stepping to build in. businesses and very focused on consumer. Earlier, entrepreneurs were very focused on building valuation. I think the entrepreneur of today who's investing in e-commerce... It's finally realizing that, that yeah. there's a lesson to be learned from the dot-com bus. Absolutely. Bars. If you look after your customers, everything else will get taken care of. Bar. Talking of this whole BPO space, something that you associated with, right? I, I want to go back to the whole e-commerce story and how that's actually turning around uh, the nature of BPOs in India as well, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're doing services, you yeah. also need that infrastructure of the BPO to very much be a part of it. Right, and right, that's right. not just travel, it's banking and finance, which has been so as the traditional mainstay of the business. Yes. What, what Do you think that the slowdown the rest of the world is facing is visible there? Or is that become less and less elastic? No, I think we are pretty uh, insulated from the global slowdown. Because 80% of our economy is indeed uh, domestically driven. Yeah. And uh, while e-commerce companies have very uh, competent storefronts, which are powered by technology, uh, last mile, which is, is indeed uh, a challenge. Yeah. So we are beginning to see things like uh, card on delivery. So today, a lot of people shop, they have to actually shell out cash. Yes. When somebody comes uh, home delivering the goods. But, but is this an Indian concept, uh, cash on delivery? Yeah, because you know, the reality some... is that a lot of demand is coming from tier two, tier three cities where for some reason people don't want to use uh, a credit card. Or may not have or just have cash income yeah, and just they don't have, want to declare ab that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think uh, it is going to transition over a period of time. But so, so in this sense, this Indian model is an Indian innovation story, isn't it? Because of what unique. you don't do in America, when things come in your post and lie outside your garages, here you physically open and the lady of the house who doesn't normally watch TV is busy shopping and paying for it. Absolutely. Nobody can tell uh, whether you've paid the right price for a company. But I think uh, there is a bit of future which is uh, built into this.